Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the limitations of understanding other people's experience through our own experience, and how to deal with that, or at least one way I've found of dealing with that. Often when I'm talking to someone, and they're describing what's going on in their life, I try to understand their experience by like putting myself in their shoes. I was often taught when I was growing up to do this, like it seems to come naturally to me, it's not something that I feel like I need to be taught, but I was also taught it a lot, like when I would do things that impacted other people, people would ask me the question that, well, how would you feel if someone did that to you? And they'd say things like that. One thing though that I don't think was emphasized very much to me when I was younger, and that I think I had to realize as an adult, was that people can be really different, and people can have really different experiences, and people don't always respond to things the same way I do. An example of this came up recently. I was talking to one of my friends, and she was expressing being upset about something that happened in her work. She had planned a vacation over the weekend in which she was going to go home and visit her family and do a bunch of things, and a bunch of things came up at work that demanded that she complete them in a certain time frame, and she needed to stay at work over the weekend and cancel her trip. And she was upset about this. And mentally, when I started trying to understand what she was going through, I thought of how I would feel if I were put in that circumstance. And I would be really upset about that, probably to the point of wanting to quit the job. And I think it's because it's really important for me to have a boundary between work and personal life, and if I'm planning something in advance, and it's not something where there is human life at stake, I'm not going to come in over the weekend to work at a job. That would just sort of like cross a boundary for me. But other people work differently from how I do. And talking to my friend about this, it became apparent that she wasn't anywhere near as upset even though she was upset, she wasn't anywhere near as upset as I would be in a similar situation. I think this illustrates kind of something that's very likely to happen when you're trying to understand another person by putting yourself in their shoes, which is that people don't necessarily feel as passionately about things. In some cases someone might be a lot more upset about something, and in some cases they might be a lot less upset, even if it's something that everyone would be upset about. And similarly for things that you get excited about, like some people just get really excited and happy about things more than other people, like different people care different amounts about different things. I think it's important to be aware of that. Uh, one problem that I've seen, and I've kind of been on both ends of this, is if there's a conversation in which one person expresses that something's bothering them, the other person might overreact, like maybe I'm like, oh, someone said this thing and I found it kind of a little bit off-putting, and they're like, oh my god, that's such a horribly rude thing, like I can't believe they'd ever do that. And then I'm thinking to myself like, no, it wasn't really horribly rude, it was just like slightly off-putting, and like why is this person overreacting? But maybe they genuinely would find that particular remark horribly rude. And I think that's okay, it's okay for people to have different reactions, different levels of extremeness of how they respond to things, different relative levels from like one particular circumstance to the other. So what have I gained, like what kind of insight have I gained, how have I changed my behavior or my way of thinking with this knowledge? I think one thing that I've tried to do when I'm talking to another person is to gain conscious awareness of when I am trying to understand their experience through my own experience. To not just do that like automatically, and to not assume that the other person is experiencing the emotions that I'm experiencing. Like to, to say, okay, this person did that, and to think, if I were in this circumstance, I would be feeling this way it's possible that they're feeling that way, but it's also possible that they are not feeling that way. They might be feeling stronger or less strong, or they might have a completely different qualitative reaction from the reaction I had. I think having that conscious awareness, and constantly reminding yourself of that possibility, 
is really helpful, really useful for like actually understanding what people are experiencing and not just what we think they might be experiencing based on our own experience. The other thing that I find really helpful is in situations like this is to focus on what people are actually saying and to kind of like calm down your mind and like almost try to turn off or tune out that. It's almost like a form of empathy, but like to tune that out a little bit. So just say, okay, what did the person actually say? Did the person express being upset or stressed out? Did the person express being really excited or enthusiastic? What words did they use? Did they use words that express or connote a very strong reaction or did it, it connote like a more mild reaction? And if you're talking to them in person, like what is their body language? What is their tone of voice? Try to like keep these things in check so that you're really like focusing on what the other person's reaction is rather than getting lost in your own head. I think it's, it's definitely useful to empathize with people and to sort of uh, put yourself in their shoes sometimes. Like sometimes you could say, oh yeah, like I really relate to that. If that happened to me, I would feel similarly. That can be really useful to do. But you don't want to like let that way of thinking or that sort of neural machinery dominate your interaction with that person. Like you want to focus mostly on what the person is actually saying, what the person is actually expressing to you. So I hope that you find this helpful. I know for me this is something that I need to continually remind myself of. And I think it's in part because I wasn't really emphasized it very much as a kid. I was kind of taught the opposite, like, oh, put yourself in other people's shoes. I wasn't really told that there are limitations of that. I had to sort of find that out. So it's like I have yet to integrate that fully into my way of thinking and way of living. So I'd also like to call on people to, when they're raising children and talking about these issues with children, to help them to be aware that there are limitations of putting yourself in another person's shoes, that that's not something that you want to do sort of boundlessly, and that in the end it's actually more important to listen to people and to focus on what they're actually saying and expressing, and that that putting yourself in their shoes is kind of secondary to actually listening to the person. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear from you if you have anything to add, as always. And I really love when people share my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.